Hello everybody and welcome to my Afterthoughts video regarding the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> well, this was a fun movie. It was very entertaining, lighthearted, you know, a movie that everybody can enjoy. And it even had a great message, just all the stuff I like. And you know, the message that life goes pretty fast and if you don't stop once in a while and look around, you might miss it. That is a very, very good message. And of course you can analyze it down all the way to, well, what am I doing on this planet? What is the meaning of life for the purpose? But we don't have to go that far, you know, because the simple message to a person who works like a horse and tries to achieve whatever they want to achieve, you know, just to tell them, hey, you know what? It's all good what you're doing, but maybe once in a while you should just stop and take it easy and look around, you know, smell a flower or, or, or just be aware what life has to offer. I think that is a very strong and a very good message. And that was kind of the reason why I left Switzerland, because there was a moment in my life in Switzerland where I just had to stop and look around. And I realized that it wasn't what I was looking for, you know. And I could tell you a lot more about living in Switzerland and maybe tell you why Switzerland might not be the paradise that you think it is, you know. But I had to move away. I had to go to the land of opportunity, the land of the free, the United States of America. That was the best decision I have ever made. Yay! Um, but back to the movie. So if you think about what Ferris and his friends did in just one day, you know, they were riding a Ferrari, which looked like a lot of fun. And then they, they went to the tallest building in the city and looked over the city. That's always nice. And then they had lunch at the very bougie restaurant. And after that, they went to a baseball game and an art museum. And then of course the parade. Yeah, they went to the parade and they ended the day sitting in a jacuzzi. And that just sounds like a lot of fun, you know? That sounds like a very nice day off. And I also like the character arcs they had, you know? Not so much Ferris Bueller, and that is actually very rare. It's not very common that the main character in the movie doesn't have an arc at all, because Ferris pretty much ended the movie the way he started you know he was the same guy but it absolutely worked for this film and it also worked that he broke the fourth wall you know that means that he's actually looking directly into the camera addressing the audience because usually if you look as an actor if you look towards the camera you always slightly look past the camera because it's very awkward if you look into the camera because then you're looking at the audience but of course in that movie that was done intentionally and it worked perfect you know now of course it worked because the character arcs of the other characters were uh, very strong you know i mean cameroon this guy went from a scared shy schoolboy to a man who takes responsibilities and actually stands up for himself. That was a, a very powerful scene and kind of probably also one of the most touching scenes in this movie, you know, when he was talking about how he uh, got pushed around and uh, I never said anything, you know. So that was very intense and a huge character arc from him being uh, in fear and sickly all the time to becoming this man who is now gonna take responsibility and stand up for himself. That was, that was beautiful. And then also Chini had a great <laughs> character arc. She went from this miserable, um, jealous um, sister, went to this um, joyful, um, supporting sister, you know? And all it took was meeting this bad boy at the police station, somebody who was not afraid to speak the truth to her, you know. And it was just so endearing to see how she went from this miserable person <laughs> to this little giddy schoolgirl who was all flustered, you know. That was great. And then in the end actually saves her brother, you know. So that was, that was amazing. I really liked the transformations of those uh, characters. And 
what else do we have? The most fun scene. Well, I really can't pick one because that movie was comprised of all fun scenes. I mean, you have to agree that pretty much every scene was fun to watch, so I can't really pick one. But the most energetic scene, I mean, hands down was the parade. I mean, that was just mind blowing. Tens of thousands of people jumping up and down and, and, and cheering and screaming. That was quite amazing how the parade built throughout the songs and then twist and shout in the end and everybody was just screaming and jumping around. That was amazing to see and really it gave me a lot of energy as well. And of course, I had to do a little um, research and look it up. And indeed, as I suspected, that was actually a real parade that happens every year in Chicago with tens of thousands of people. So they made use of that, you know, and they filmed a lot of stuff during this parade. Apparently, some people didn't even know about it. You know, they just filmed, especially concentrating on the long shots where you can see all the people because that casting call would have been insane, you know. But there is more because they were shooting it on two weekends, on two Saturdays. And at the beginning, like I said, they used the real parade with all the uh, wide shots. And then they needed to shoot more scenes, you know, close-ups and stuff. And so they had a radio announcement, apparently, telling the people that this parade is going to happen again, kind of, uh, you know, pretending this time for this movie. And apparently tens of thousands of people showed up again and they were able to shoot all the different angles they needed. And that was just amazing. And I talked with Jessica about it, how amazing it is that you think about 20, 30 years ago when you were shooting a movie, people were excited and they just want to be part of it, you know, and they could make it happen and you don't have to pay them. And, you know, it would be impossible to get a, a written permission from every person in the crowd. But nowadays you want to do something like that. Oh my gosh, much more difficult. Everybody wants to be paid and everybody needs to give permission for their likeness and image, even if you're in the crowd. I mean. I mean, I understand why that is, but nowadays they are pushing it a little bit too far sometimes, in my opinion. But it was great to see such a big crowd um, enjoying the movie. So that was definitely a big, big plus and amazing to see. Um, yeah, and then a few trivia things. For example, the, the song, um, oh yeah. I didn't know, but that was actually done by a Swiss band. You know, me being from Switzerland. I mean, I have to say, I have heard the name Yellow before. That's the, the name of the band. It's pretty much two people, Yellow without the W. But um, I was not aware that that was a Swiss band. And I was certainly not aware that that famous song that I have heard in other movies as well was actually done by this Swiss band, Yellow. So that was interesting to learn. And then also a crazy thing. Remember the shot when the Ferrari goes backwards through the glass wall and, and crashes in the backyard? And there's this shot from, from the house down, you know, looking down to this damaged Ferrari. Apparently, they were shooting this scene late fall and it's supposed to be spring or something, you know. And because it was late fall, all the leaves of the trees and the bushes, they were kind of yellowish and it didn't look right director didn't like it so what they did they actually hand painted all the leaves of the trees and bushes green they made them green i mean this is this is just unbelievable this actually sounds pretty unbelievable you know but then the interesting part is because there was a reverse shot from the backyard up to the building where ferris cameroon and sloan were standing and you can see in the reflection of the window, you actually see a tree with all yellow uh, leaves on it. And, 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 and a lot of leaves were even missing on top of the tree. So you can tell, you can see that there must be, I guess, some truth to that, you know. So that was amazing to read. Can you imagine? And there was more than one shooting day. So they had to do it more than once, just painting all the, the leaves green again in the morning before they start shooting. That's the kind of stuff we do in movie sets you now. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I've done some crazy stuff as a PA production assistant. You know, you, you do all kinds of stuff. I, I, I have hundreds of stories. But anyway, 
The last thing um, I read that they were thinking about doing a sequel, you know, a few years after the first movie, and it was supposed to be about Ferris in college and all his shenanigans, I suppose, you know, but um, somebody decided against it. And I think that was probably a good decision because Ferris Bueller's Day Off stands on its own, you know, it's a great movie and I don't think it needs a sequel and the sequel for sure can't be as good as the original movie. So I'm fine with not having a sequel. It was a great movie, I really enjoyed it, a lot of fun, so very entertaining and thanks for the recommendation and we will see you in the next one, okay? Bye-bye.